I'm representing this morning. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's good? I'm, I'm representing this morning. <laughs> Hello, expectations too. Oh, yeah. Your beard grows back so fast. Yeah, this is uh. Um, I'm thinking about maybe making a move to the barbershop or something. Uh, oh, I've, already, I've already done that, dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, you uh, you went to like somebody's house, right? I went to my barber's house. Like the way my barber had it set up. Oh no! Put that hat away. <laughs> <laughs> that scare you? <laughs> yeah, put that hat back on. <laughs> so my barber, my barber has been like a very activist on Twitter. He's like, "Why are pawn shops open, but I can't be open?" Like he's very like upset, which I understand. I get like that's his livelihood. So he was like, "What I've been doing?" He's like. I've been opening the barber shop and only one person's allowed in. You have to come through the back. You have to park in the back of the park of the parking lot. Or he's like, I've been with my barber since I was four. Like I've been with him forever. I'm I'm a loyal, loyal guy. Ain't nobody with <laughs> my head. But him, loyal customer. So he's like, you can come to my house. It's so like this dude had it where I went in his garage. He had like the shop set. I wasn't allowed to touch anything. And he wore a mask. And like, so like it was cool. But funny story how I got my barber. My mom used to think she could cut my hair and she would just mess it all the way up. I would look like a crackhead baby. Yeah. So my parents used to go to like high school football games when I was like a little little. And Andre, that's his name, my bar, he would go and he would like just look at kids and be like, What's wrong with your head? And like give him his little business card. Which is yeah. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting marketing strategy. I mean kind of rude but gets to the point you just roast people <laughs> roast kids so i was at a football game apparently with my parents one time no i was at the grocery store it was at walmart and he said who cut that baby's head <laughs> his business card and that's how he became a barber that's that's a good strategy how and you were how old i was like four mm. And he's oh, roasting four year olds. <laughs> hey, I mean, whatever gets the job done. Um, but yeah, it's like people are starting to just be like, you know what? F it. Uh, we're doing we're doing this. And and it's like uh, what is it? I know like a lot of, a lot of people are very like stay inside, blah blah blah. But then you have the people that like have kids and like have a family like that energy is different like you're gonna risk a one in a thousandth chance yes like every day well, right across the street we have neighbors and they have like five-year-olds and like they be out there riding they bike and all that stuff i was like you can't expect those kids to stay inside 24 7 they're gonna go crazy yeah it's very interesting um <laughs> But you see how many people on Galveston, though? Like, they ran to Galveston when the beach was open. I don't even... Yeah, it's in that situation, I'm just like, y'all go first. Y'all can trend <laughs> set that situation. <laughs> I'm fine with not setting that trend. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be in the middle of the pack. Yes. Late late middle. I'll be, but, I'll, be seven, I'll be seventh, man. I'm not afraid. Um, yeah, so... We'll see. I'll, I'll have to call up my barber, see what he's doing. I, I wanted to experiment with the buzz cut, but I kind of I need like him to like edge it. Like I need him to like actually make it look good. Cause our all barber shops, our all barbers make everybody like that hairline. Like Jalen Rose would not have a career without his hairline. <laughs> like he would not be on ESPN. We ain't never found out who his barber was yet. <laughs> nah, his, it's a secret. Like his, his barber works in that Lifetime in New York. I'm convinced. Yeah, I don't. Uh, what was it? Did you see the whole D Dallas debacle situation up here with uh, that salon situation? Yeah, how she got arrested, but the governor was like, release her. It's almost like, I remember reading that story like a week ago on Facebook, and I was just like, there's a thousand of these people. <laughs> there's like, everyone, yeah. you're not special. Like, so I just like scroll through. Yeah. I but, thought Ted, Ted Cruz apparently got his hair cut there the other day. Yeah, so 
I have no, this is such a stupid story. I don't, it's one of those like pointless for no reasons. Um, basically the salon lady like aggravated the people too. She mm-hmm. went on like publicly ripped up the warrant or whatever. Yeah. And she's very like well off. Like it's a pretty popular salon and that's why I got in the news in the first place. Yeah. So. I don't know if it was true or not, but I read that apparently like armed gunmen like walked her into the building every day when she went into work. Like people who believe the second, right, second amendment like heavily, they were like, you know, give us our freedom and like they were, like protecting her while she was working. I was like, what kind of crap is this? Yeah, it's it's getting to that point where it's like is like people are like, is this oppression? <laughs> like <laughs> like us staying in inside. But um yeah, I don't know. And I I don't have an opinion on any of this, but uh you know our Dell Hansen guy? Who? And Dell Hansen. Uh he's a Dallas sports reporter, but he likes he goes on these tangents. He's the old white I, guy. I've heard of him. He like well, he like went off on the lady and he he went like toward the race route. And like yeah. if it was a black lady um doing this, it wouldn't have got the attention. Right. All right. I don't know. It, it might have. I don't know. Uh, I just think it, it got the attention, the warrant part of it, of her like ripping up the warrant, and she was already a famous salon lady. Right. I think. I mean, you can throw some race in there. I feel like it was just more like status, like socioeconomic, in that situation. Right. But, I mean, that's not my final opinion. I'm just like thinking through it but um what was it salon is that in that situation yeah um all right well this is the shy fi podcast episode 60 um yeah i told you so i'm trying to like maybe extend these episodes a little bit because why not i mean i feel like I was looking at the analytics a little bit. I was like, hmm, what, what would happen if I did like an hour to an hour and a half episodes? And if you need to go or anything, dip, I can, I can still like record. No, so <laughs> don't, don't like, like, oh, I got to stay. Like, if you need to like do something real quick, feel free. I can talk through it. Um, but yeah, so try to do an hour, an hour and a half. I mean, I know some of these podcast episodes, they can go three to four hours. Like, you know the you know the Joe Rogan podcast? Oh yeah, of course. He does like maybe 10 4 hour podcasts a month. Like that's crazy. And so I'm going to start working more on that maybe cuz I, I can talk for days, but you know, yeah, just kind of want to practice through it. Um episode 60, shout out everybody listening on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Um, let's see. Oh, I want to talk real quick about this. Uh, did you see all the Takashi stuff yesterday? I've been, I've been seeing like people are like, "Give me Bobby Smurda over Takashi Six Nine, but like I didn't see what the whole ordeal was. Man, oh man, this was a uh, moment in hip hop because. Okay, so this is like the moment of, uh, what was it, Drake, this is like a Drake Meek Mill situation in 2015. When Drake dropped that diss track, a lot of people were like, oh, hip hop's dead now because, you know, it was like a, it was the first time where it was a publicly known rapper that has ghostwriters, which all of them do now, has ghostwriters dropping a diss track on someone you know, because Meek Mill accused Drake of having ghostwriters. Right. Which we all knew about. Right. But him dropping a diss track toward Meek Mill, even though Meek was, like, kind of saying the truth a little bit. You know, a right. lot of people were just kind of like, you know, the old heads were like, oh, that hip-hop's dead. Yesterday was kind of a moment like that. This man snitched. He did the opposite of just rap culture of, like, you know, he's supposed to take the – jail time for your bros and stuff like that um he just ratted everyone out got back now he's back 
and he had 2 million live viewers on Instagram. Do you know what the record was before? What? 50,000 wow. by Tory Lanez. He broke the <laughs> record by 1.6 million. That is bonkers. Um, and I'm, I don't know, it's an interesting situation. Because a lot of old heads were like, oh, Takashi's never going to have a career again. But I was kind of like, no one cares anymore. Like, if you, like, no one even does that anymore. The, the whole, like, people are going to rat on you nowadays. Right. Smarts. You know? I mean, right. like, are you going to take two years for a cover-up? Or are you going to snitch on that person and then uh get free time like it's just like it's interesting i don't know but uh yeah seeing him having two million viewers on instagram live was something that like this is opposite of just hip-hop culture in the first place you know so i mean have you ever heard of that thing of like don't rat on your homies yeah i mean that's that's just like even like between you and I, like it's just like something that you know growing up. But you know, there's sometimes where love is lost or loyalty goes out the window, and things happen. But our generation, our society, gives people second chances. Like look at Kodak, Takashi. Like look at all these people that have done like horrendous things, and we just give them a second chance because we like their music. Yeah, yeah. The ten-year-old kids don't care. Yes. And they have phones. They have just as much power as anybody else right. in the music industry. So, um, so yeah, as like, you know, kids have phones, they just have, they can listen to whoever they want. They don't care. Like, and also like, it's like a situation where, I don't know, if we're like involved, if we're both involved in a crime, but I do the most work in the crime. Like I do like 90% of everything. <laughs> And they arrest us both. I wouldn't blame you for being like, "Yo, this was all Shiloh's plan. Like, this was like all his." You'll show the text messages. You'll yep. show everything. I ain't trying. I ain't trying to get life in prison. If if they can say, "Hey, we'll give you a plea deal if you just admit you were the getaway driver," be like Shiloh had a <laughs> yeah. Shiloh had a nine mil. He clipped that guy three times. <laughs> this is where he hiding. I'm giving it. I ain't spending life in prison for you. Exactly. So I get it. Like, I get that part of it. Um, I guess the whole writing situation is if, like, you lie about it. Or if I, like, said in that situation, nah, that 10% was more valuable than my, like, 90%. I don't know. <laughs> make some, like, twisted situation. So, yeah. Seeing, like, yeah, that, that was a that's weird like, moment in hip-hop. That's like, that's like J.R. Smith saying in Game 7 of 2016, his little third quarter spurt where he had like three threes in a row was more important than like LeBron's block or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was definitely a iconic moment. A lot of people, it's more about the hate, more about the, uh, the image more than the actual music. I mean, you can have the most lyrical miracle music, but no one cares. Like, no, if, I mean, if you're like, in it for the music you just can't be in it for the music anymore you have to be like bigger than that now you have to be right. doing everything so um yeah what well, my favorite part i saw the music video for the song uh he was like you know he he does this like little scream you mad big mad and the editor put um takashi's head as a rat emoji i was like <laughs> He's so so. That's like some like three D chess. Like <laughs> he's claiming his rat image. Like right. oh my goodness. Like he's got everybody on checkmate right now. And he's like, I think he's still on. What do you call it? Government or uh, when a house, house arrest? House arrest. But he's government protected, witness protection type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he's being protected by anyone who's trying, because there's a lot of people that want to shoot down this guy. Right. But the fact he's, he is in his own zone. He, he is unshootable right now. Right. Like, it's, 
he has a lot of leverage on everything right now in music. So he didn't change anything about his style. He's the same old yelling rainbow color guy. Yeah. Um, it's impressive. It's uh, I think people are starting to realize that, you know, these five-year-olds through 15 year olds don't care about rats gang. Like it's just music. And that's how it's always been in the first place. Back when I was listening to Lil Wayne back in elementary, I didn't care about Crips and Bloods. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's I just. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't understand what he was talking about. I said, "Yeah, I'm a Crip. I'm a Blood. I was going along with it." Like we're not like try, we're not. This is a whole other topic we're not go to, but like, yeah, this is like a. I wasn't trying to be a Blood. But it was cool to say that you're a blood. You just said it in the right <laughs> elementary, <laughs> like in the right elementary spot. So, yeah, as, as long as you're self aware and know what's happening. So, yeah, it's uh, hey, I think the old head just started to realize that. Don't let them carry your crips here. This podcast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> carry your crips. It's a real deal. Um, but yeah, that's all I had on Takashi. I just, I was extremely impressed. <laughs> was, yeah. So, um. I know you want to talk about the schedule, NFL. Yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, we we can do what we did last last year and see how awful my picks were. That <laughs> Jets pick, that Jets pick that you sent me, I yeah. cringe. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I remember that when me, you, Blake, David predicted everything. We all had like ten and six, twelve and four. I remember you had like the highest. You had like thirteen <laughs> and three. I think. <laughs> You're all like that is way too high. Um, I think Dave at the time had the lowest at like nine and seven. That still wasn't, but we finished eight and eight again. Yeah. Um, so this year won't be as high. I'll, I will not have 13. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Whenever like we don't think we're going to do good, we do good for some reason. Um, but so I didn't really watch it at all because I was, was it like a three hour presentation? So I really only caught like the last like hour of it, but I went back and rewatched it. So like they would bring on somebody from like a certain team, like for the Cowboys, they brought Michael Irvin on. Yeah. Discuss like the whole schedule run rundown. And then they bring in like either the GM or head coach of the certain team and like talk about the schedule as well. Hmm. They, they had every head coach. No, like they either bring in somebody like a representative from the team. Oh, so I watched the Bengals. I don't know why I watched the Bengals get this <laughs> schedule released. Like I care, but <laughs> yeah. But they brought in Zach Taylor, the head coach, and so it, it was interesting. Zach Taylor, yeah, he's a head coach now of yeah Cincinnati. Okay, I, I'm just ingraining that. What's what's his name? The old Marvin head coach. Lewis. Marvin, Marvin Lewis. Lewis. He's forever gonna be the Bengals head coach for me. <laughs> <laughs> but Zach Taylor was he? A, is he one of the players back then? Who's a player, linebacker? Probably. Probably. Yeah. For the, okay. Cool. Um, but the Bengals. Um, so it was a three-hour presentation. Were there any head coaches? Um, Bob. I want to say Andy Reid was when they did the Chiefs, but I'm not exactly certain. <laughs> Andy Reid's like, just give us anyone. Um, <laughs> but so Michael Irvin was the Cowboys guy. Yeah, like when they were like announcing the schedule. Hmm. Three hour presentation. Yes. NFL knows like no one's watching anything. We can just extend this however long. We could have done like a three part <laughs> for that. Um, but okay, so the I can bring it up since you're like you're on your phone. Um, but I, I mean I like our schedule. Like our schedule is pretty cool. I saw that we play the rounds. Yeah, and the new state and then the new stadium will be the first people there. Um. Just glad we don't play the Giants first. We always play them first for some reason. Um, do you think this? football? Do you think football will happen on time now? Um. Yeah. But was it? Um. There's gonna be no fans. It's not gonna be normal. It's no fans. The thing about it, they're going to find a way. They're going to find – it's the NFL. This is the most, like, you know, they will pay anybody 
everybody in the political world, especially. There's like they're good with they're good in the you know they have great politics. relationships in politics. Right. Right. So if you have that, that's like having great relationships with the policeman. Like you're you're good to go. Like it's you can find a way. You'll you'll figure out a way. And so, um, uh, what do you call it? I know the NBA is trying to do something like this. Where they're trying to have. Well, the only thing about the NFL is that there's so many players. That's right. the thing. Um, I just think they're going to find a way. I don't know how they well, might. They, I don't know. How about you? I heard the NBA is going to, they're thinking about moving to like a one, two city location, like either being in like Disney, Orlando or Las Vegas and yeah. making the team stay there. And they're like, every team is going to have to um, take a test before the game. And if a player tests positive for coronavirus, they're not going to stop the season. They're just going to make the individual player go isolate 14 days. So imagine if LeBron. So like, funny. Imagine <laughs> if LeBron game game one like the NBA Finals or something test positive for Corona. He's oh missing the whole my series. God, that's it's like it's funny, but it's, it's serious. Yes, but it's just goofy when you like think about it. It's like you have to worry about injuries, but then you have to worry about a virus. <laughs> like it's yeah. sheesh. Um, like there's two. There were two organizations in the NBA that opened up yesterday for individual workouts, but the conditions were the players had to be 12 feet apart. Um, no coaching staff could be there. The doors were wide open. So like you couldn't touch a door. You go in one way and out the other. Like it was very like goofy. The players had to be 12 feet away. Yeah. 12 feet apart from each other. From each other. Yes. So that's like one player per hoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Season's not happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the NBA is definitely – I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're just going to cancel it. I mean, because they have to worry about next year at this point. So, uh, you know, I always, like, grew up – it's kind of interesting. Like, I grew up – or, uh, you know, when you see Almanacs back back then and you see, like, the list of champions, it was always interesting to see, like, in baseball, just these random gaps. It's like, you know, Orioles win, Yankees win, World War II – Yankees win, Orioles, war, war, like, it's just like, wow, like, they just, like, whenever there's a war happening, they just, like, said they won, um, but NBA, um, what are we talking about? NFL, but NFL, do you think NFL is going to happen this season? I do think the NFL happens, like, a lot of my friends who are Cowboy fans have already bought tickets for, like, December, like, when the Niners come to town, but, Man. <laughs> Yeah, they, that's, they already, that's not happening. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's the last thing that's happening. They already bought those, but um, I do think it's gonna happen. I do think it will probably be modified. Maybe they'll only allow like fifty percent capacity, depending on how Corona is doing in September or something like that. I don't think it'll be full capacity. I don't know if college football season will happen, but I think the NFL season is gonna happen. Yeah, remember some episodes back when we were talking about this at first, the virus, and I was like. This is going to be like a year situation. And like you and John were like kind of like, eh, it's going to be like three, four months-ish. I was just like, I don't know. It's just like, it's just going to be a long time um, to even be somewhat normal. Because um, this, I mean, they're already talking about like predicting a fall wave of this virus. And right. so, well, they expect, uh, that to, they expect it to come with the flu season. Yeah. So, definitely interesting. Um, but I think when it comes to August and stuff, people will just, like, not care anymore. Right. But it's – people going to – you know, you see those stats of uh, – you know, that typical guy on Facebook that's like, oh, this 20 people died in a car wreck in yes. the last hour. You know, those people. And I think by the time they're going to see five months of that, they're going to be like, you know what? It might just be, <laughs> we'll just have to deal with another disease. But because um, humans want their football, human beings want their football. They are, we are selfish people. Right. We, after five months of this, there's going to be some different mentalities going on. Um, like, I think the NFL won't be able to have a training camp or a preseason. But I think yeah. the NFL season will happen. 
they're going to do the most minimum maximum thing, like the most minimum thing right. they can do. Um, you know, if they, if they even did have an NBA season, like a rest of this, like a take the four best teams or something, whoever would win, I feel like no one would even take that serious. Like, you know, you know when you're talking <laughs> about championships, like, oh, LeBron won five. Like, nope, that one in 2020 doesn't count. And you just right. have to be like, you have a point a little bit. You know, it's kind of a fourth of a championship at that point. Well, um, I mean, I think it's similar to, like, when LeBron got his first title. That was the lockout season. Yeah. I wouldn't even compare that. That was still, like, they had a good 50 games in the season. They still went through the whole playoffs. But this would be, like, skipping just the middle of it and just going straight to the finals. But, um. I don't know. Uh, I mean, there are only 20 games left, so we're, we're on the back stretch. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought they were just going to do, like, just – they could I, – I thought at first they were just going to do, like, the top eight teams, top four teams in each conference, and do, like, a five-game series and then a seven-game series for the championship. I mean, I feel like that could happen. Um Let's see, NFL schedule. Uh, I, I actually thought we were going to do the uh, the 18 game season this That's year. next year. That's next, next year. year. Okay. I was like looking for my second buy. I was like, well, oh, guess we're going to get one. Um, but uh, this is the first time I'm looking at the schedule, actually. I'm just at Rams. Um, we always play the Sunday night opener. Um, <laughs> first four games at Rams. Atlanta comes here at Seattle ooh, versus Cleveland. <laughs> okay, uh, Cleveland. Ugh. Um, uh, will – who – okay, is Dak going to play the first two weeks? Is We got Dalton. <laughs> is Andy Dalton going to play? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to pay him before July. Mm, I don't know. I mean, this could be a, this, this could be a whole other Zeke situation. Um, how many games does Zeke miss last year? Two or three? Four? No, we paid him before the season. He came in. He started week one. Oh, he just went straight through. Okay. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Uh, at Rams. I mean, we want to do a win-loss thing real quick. First impression. (laughs) So, it's their first stadium. It's the first game in their new stadium. Of course, the Cowboys are going to play because so many Cowboy fans live out there in L.A. Yeah. I The Rams have lost. Todd Gurley and Brandon Cooks, so I think they deteriorated a little bit, and I don't, I don't think they have the defensive pieces to keep up. I think we'll win that in a close game. I yeah, so I think they like Rams kind of lost their momentum a little bit. Sean McVay was like the king of the world for a little bit, and then last year everybody was like, oh, okay, it's let's move on uh, from that. Yeah. And so I think we'll, and we always like kind of do good the first week or like you know prime time. <laughs> Right. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say one and out right there. Um, Atlanta comes here and at noon. We win in that game. <laughs> noon. Yeah. I, I agree. We win. I, my only concern is stopping Julio, like who, who's going to be the cornerback to guard Julio. But I, I don't believe Matt Ryan's going to beat us. And I believe we'll be able to contain Todd Gurley because I don't think he'll be the same. That's true. Um, I don't even scare the Falcons anymore. I mean, they're just <laughs> – they went – they're one of those, like – never mind. I was going to say, like, Falcons-Panthers, that duo, and they're just, like, fall off the face of the earth now. Right. Um, yeah, I'll say win. Uh, at Seattle, loss. Loss. <laughs> we are not going to Seattle and winning. <laughs> what do we like going 3-0 and at Seattle? <laughs> what loss? Um, I mean, it's not happening. Um, man, this is kind of an easy schedule. The next four games, Cleveland. Whoa, we have three straight home games against Cleveland, New York Giants, and Cardinals. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, are we? Do we have a, sec- a tough second half schedule or something? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, Cleveland. I mean, should we lose to Cleveland? I don't. No, we are not losing to Baker. <laughs> no. I come through with a vengeance. 
Um, hmm. No. I'm not afraid of Cleveland. Sort of one of these three home gimmies. Um, Cleveland. Um, okay, we'll win. We'll win against Cleveland. I'll say we'll win against the Giants even the next week. Yep. But I think we will lose Monday Night Football when Arizona comes here. No. I feel like that's like that's like Kyler Murray going off for of 400 yards against in his hometown. Oh, that's that's per- we're losing that game. <laughs> it's a setup for a Cowboy disappointment. What do you? We're gonna win that game too. Yes, we're not. All right. <laughs> He's not developed yet. We're not gonna lose that game yet. You never know. Um, and then. We go on the road two straight times at Washington and at Philly. Um, oh, yeah. At Washington. Man, I'm just not scared of anyone in our division anymore. No one's intimidating. <laughs> no one, like, even Philly is just kind of like, eh. Yeah. Um, at Washington, we'll win. We'll win that game. How about you? Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not afraid of Dwayne Haskins. So... You're at six and one. I'm at five and two. Man, these are way too high for like. We'll see that second half. Um, uh, at Philly, Sunday wow. night football. Yeah, we always split against Philly. It's just yeah, yeah. A loss. Um, and then Pittsburgh comes here. CBS three o'clock game. We're winning. I don't even know who's going to be the quarterback. Ben, Mason. No, this is weird. Is Ben Roethlisberger still there? I Maybe think he's so. still there, but like, is he going to play? Is he going to be the same? Man, they fell off. <laughs> Did Antonio Brown start Week One like at Pitt? No, no. For Raiders, right? Okay. Man, I don't even know. Antonio Brown had a weird year last year. I don't even know where he is. Where is he now? Uh, a free agent. I don't know he's making rap songs now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. Um, all right. Bye week. You're at 7-2. and two. I'm at 6-3. and three. All right. We come off. We play at Minnesota. Win. Loss. This isn't a bad schedule. Okay. At, at Minnesota. We're the next, we're the at Minnesota, we're losing. At Minnesota, uh, Washington comes here, and then at Baltimore. Whoa. We are, <laughs> we're, yes, we're losing two of the three. We're losing to the Vikings and Ravens. Hmm. I would have to agree. Hmm. But well, we always have one of those games where we just like shock the world. We was like, wow, we won. Like no one believed in us. That could be at Baltimore. Um, but is Baltimore going to be the same? I feel like this happened. We fall for this every year where like that random Super Bowl champion is just average the next year. I think, I think they got better. So I wouldn't be surprised if. They at least have a good regular season. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say we win at Minnesota, but we lose the next two. We lose versus Washington, and then we lose at Baltimore. You think we lose at home to the Redskins? We haven't lost. Oh, no, no, no. no. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. No, we're not losing the Redskins. What, what did I say that for? Um, No. Okay, yeah, I said that wrong. We'll win at Minnesota. And then we'll win when Washington comes here, but we'll lose at Baltimore. Okay. okay. I'm going to say loss at Washington, uh, win Thanksgiving, and lose to Baltimore. Hmm. You say lose at Minnesota as well? Yes. Hmm. Eight and four for you. Eight and four for me. Um, so we play – so Washington comes here for Thanksgiving. That's good. Yes. Have an easy – we always been playing. We've been playing like some tough teams on Thanksgiving. I don't like that. Um, last four 
at Cincinnati. <laughs> Joey Burrow. Hmm. That's a that's a big W. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say we win. Hmm. Man, this is this is low key kind of easy. This is not as bad as I thought you were gonna think. Because you were kind of you thought this. Did you think the schedule was hard? The the second half I think is difficult. We play San Francisco comes here Sunday night football. Um, hmm, we'll lose. Wait, San Fran, San Fran, who? Yeah, we'll lose. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? I think we are going to lose to San Fran. And then we finish the schedule. Philly comes here, and then we play at New York Giants. We'll win the Philly game, and we will. I mean win the Giants game. Yes, but I feel like but I feel like that's gonna be like a uh, extra game where we rest our players. I can't believe I'm saying this. Usually I'm like down on these predictions. Um I got eleven and five. Yeah, me too. That is way too high for me. <laughs> Man, this is really weird. Well the schedule okay, the thing for me is if we go if we start the first games three and one and we can win those gap games whenever we play those three straight home games, I'll feel so much more comfortable. Yeah. Um, who? I'm trying to look at who we played last year. Like, because we know we have, like, a, we're sorted by, like, divisions. Yeah, we played Minnesota last year. Um. So we played that division in Minnesota, Green Bay, NFC. What is that? NFC North. North. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's with yeah Packers, Packers, Vikings. Those were like Super Bowl contending teams. Right. And the Bears were good. They were disappointing, of course, but we lost them anyway. Um, no. And we beat the Lions. And then we played the AFC East last year, who, which was surprisingly good because the Patriots and the – was it the Bills yeah. were pretty yeah. good? Yeah. And we lost to uh, the Jets. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and barely and beat the, the Dolphins. Yeah. Beat the Dolphins? Yeah, we beat the Dolphins. Yeah, we beat the Dolphins. Um, and, then, and then we played – the Saints for the fun of it. <laughs> that was one of the just random two games. Um, and this year, what divisions do we play? We play, we play the NFC West, which tough. Yeah. And the AFC North, right? Yeah. I'm trying to get these divisions together. The AFC North because we play Cincy, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Baltimore. Yeah, and the AFC North is terrible, actually. Yeah, besides because – And they used to be the probably the <laughs> best division back yeah. in the day. Right. Pittsburgh and Baltimore were powerhouses. Cincinnati was always just really average. So having, right. like, a third – your third best team in the division, like, consistent average is, like, pretty tough. Right. Um yeah, eleven and five. Gosh, I kind of like it. I'm kind of. This is very interesting. I like it. Um, you got any thoughts? Extra thoughts? Our defense. I'm scared for our defense, but offensively, I think we'll be <laughs> fine. If we sign, if we sign Dak, I think we'll be fine. And we have a new coach. Um. We're approaching the 40-minute mark. I'm scared that's going to just gonna like shut off. This application said we can do more than 40 minutes, but I'm scared. So in the next minute, if we just like die, <laughs> this is why. Um, okay. So okay, nothing's happening. Okay, what were we talking? About? Okay, for a legit like minute yesterday, I was like, who's our head coach? <laughs> I was like, because I was like, 
Jason Garrett's not there. That's all I know. And I was like, wait a second. Who is our coach? And I totally forgot I was like Mike McCarthy. And I was like, right. I still don't know how I feel about that. It's just like, just, I think we're just glad it's just not Jason Garrett. I think that's like yeah. the only thing that like we're good on. Well, we're going to um, see him twice. We're going to see him twice a year. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, who is he? Is he with the Giants now? Yeah, he's the offensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator. Good for him. That, that's some cowboy stuff that could happen. We lose to him twice. Like, Giants win two games next year, and they're both against us. <laughs> he's he's going to come out with all the tricks. That's, that, that's some Cowboys BS that could happen. But, yeah, this is relatively um okay. Because I remember, I think, last year, because we had to play at New England and at the Saints. Mm-hmm. Those are automatic losses. So, yeah, I'm kind of encouraged. Uh, we play we play Baltimore in the preseason, too, and Pittsburgh. Get some practice. In the preseason, we play Chargers, Baltimore, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Houston. We winning? Man, I am not talking about the preseason. <laughs> so I am going to go two and three. In the I am preseason. not talking about I'm not talking about the preseason. Now, Andy Dalton going to leave us to 5-0 because we got rid of Cooper. <laughs> we got rid of Cooper. And he's going to ball out. He's, he's trying to get some starting action. Man. Um, <laughs> um, what else about the Cowboys? Any do you, thoughts? Do you think that with all the new defensive pieces and Mike McCarthy being a defensive coach, will we be able to stop the run? And the pass together this year. Oh, we we can't do both. We we got we got to pick one. <laughs> um, I feel like our run stop will be good, but because we lost, I mean we lost Byron Jones. He was kind of okay. Like, he was kind of. Who else did we lose? Wait, Jeff. we lost uh, Heath. Yeah, That's our Heath. dude. Um, we lost Witten. We lost Frederick. Yeah, I feel like we won't be able to stop the pass much. But we'll contain the run. We'll be okay with the run. Um, but, yeah, I feel like – what is it? Um, I feel like we just said, uh, you know what, let's just get the receiver first round. Let's just win these games 50 to 30, <laughs> like those type, <laughs> those, those type of games. Let's just let the defense do what they do. Because, like, you know, that's how it kind of was last year, it felt like. Um, we'd be down 10-0. It's just like, you know what? We're done. Like, it's just like uh, that type of situation. Um, because, like, Zeke is our best player, but it is so hard to win when your best players are running back. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's it's nice, but, like, we don't care when we're down 10 points, you know, mm-hmm. about a running back. Like, but that's the great thing about Zeke. He, he can adjust. Like, he can go out, be a receiver real quick. So, um, yeah, I kind of – I hope we have more of those Zeke performances. Like, just a random, like, 100-yard running game. But, you know, 50 yards receiving, you know, type of thing. Correct. Um, I mean, we have three wide receiver studs. And, like – I think losing Cole Beasley was pretty important. Like, that was kind of a big loss for us, you know? Right. But so, now we we replace CeeDee Lamb for Cole Beasley and Randall Cobb. And, like, I like how Blake Jarwin's developing. Like, I'm okay with losing Witten because, like, Blake Jarwin's decent. Mm-hmm. Our wide receiver is kind of nice this year. And, like, Gallup is a great surprise. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I saw a tweet. It was like a – what is it? No one's talking about how Gallup had a thousand yard season in the second year. Like, right. I was like no one is talking about that. <laughs> and so I didn't realize that was his second year. Jeez. Right. So yeah, entering last year, it was kind of scary because it was like we have our receiver, we have Coop, but then we lost Beasley. Dez isn't coming back. So it was just kind of very like scary. <laughs> and so 
But this year, we're I have no doubts anymore. I'm, I'm good. So, like our offense should be elite. Yeah, yeah, man. Better be averaging forty points a game. Um, but yeah, that's all my Cowboys takes. Is that all yours? Yeah, I mean, if the season happens, so uh, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we please talk about the story that's come out this week? Talking about that. If Horace Grant had a bad game, Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael Jordan would not let. I <laughs> love that. I love that. That's the MJ I love. Give me this nice MJ. Nah. Give me the punching teammates. That's the most epic part about MJ to me. Uh, <laughs> didn't let a player eat is wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, it's, it's not he didn't let a player. He didn't let a grown man. <laughs> hey, man, if you don't perform, you don't eat. Like, hey, <laughs> that's a great motivation, though. <laughs> so, What's your motivation for waking up today? I want to be able to eat after the game. <laughs> hey, I bet he played harder that next game. Uh, yeah, just imagine the team goes to McDonald's and MJ's like, nah, <laughs> you ain't. I got your meal and I'm eating it. Um, <laughs> so... Man, um, uh, Horace, and what was it? I kind of learned about the whole, um, let's see. So when the Jordan rule situation happened, the book, everybody yeah. snitching, they kind of thought it was Horace that yes. kind of snitched. And I was like, man, they just threw that guy under the bus. <laughs> and so, um, it couldn't have been Horace though. Cause like, the stuff that they were revealing in that book, it had to come from management or the coaching staff. Yeah. I didn't, like, I didn't realize that. Um, there's actually a lot of things I'm learning in this. This is, like, really informational. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised. Um, what is it? But, yeah, I was like, maybe Horace told a couple things, but, like, there's a lot more people than just the players in that situation. Like it could have been anybody that could snitch or something like that. They got multiple coaches. Um, yeah. So what is it? Uh, there was a, the shocking thing about this, these past couple episodes that was a little mind blowing was uh, when they played the Atlanta Hawks, I think in 98, they played in the Atlanta dome. Well, Whoa, wait, whoa, wait. The Georgia Dome. Playing in that – this is stupid. So, were the Atlanta Hawks – they weren't playing in the Atlanta Dome just for fun. No. They moved there. They moved because there because of, of Michael, yes. That's crazy. That is, that is really wild. Like, do you see some of the views of it? Like, yes. some people on the opposite side, and they're like, yeah – I was like, my gosh, that that like really stood out. I was like, y'all moved to a whole stadium just for one game. <laughs> That's pretty epic. Um, yeah, it just shows you the worldwide part of it. Um, man, I didn't like how they excluded my guy Isaiah Thomas. Man, they they did not <laughs> like the dude. I saw like there were really people debating that John Stockton should have made the team over Isaiah Thomas. I was like, are y'all serious? <laughs> Um, I always find it funny in the, in that team picture, you see everybody and then you see Christian Leitner, <laughs> like one is not like the other, but it was just crazy how much hype he had. Um, but and I think, I think I said this to you. I don't know. I think like Isaiah Thomas is like how James Harden is nowadays. I like, appreciate it. No one, yeah, no one likes their style. But it works, and you know they. And the thing about it, he had great timing because it was like, you know, post Magic and Bird going down their prime, but MJ still hadn't gone to that level yet. So he had he won those two championships like really perfectly, hmm. and um, I mean Harden hasn't had that situation where like there's like a gap. He's always had to play the Warriors. I mean, that's the only thing. He only had to play the best team ever. That's all, that's all I say about Harden. I'm like, 
yeah, Harden loses in the playoffs, but he loses against the best team ever every time. Like, he, he got eliminated by them for the last five years. Right. That's a great team to get eliminated by. So, I, I always make that comparison, but um, was there anything that stood out in the MJ doc lately? Obviously, who? Um, the whole – wait, 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 pause. The the vacation that Dennis Rodman needed. <laughs> <laughs> how Seriously, you gonna be, man. How are you going to be mid-work and say, I need to go to Vegas for 40 I hours? I like that. I like and, that. <laughs> and Michael, Michael Jordan come busting down your door. <laughs> the scene that they were describing of MJ knocking on Dennis Rodman's hotel room and, like, Carmen Electra is in there. That's, like, so 90s. It's just, like, wow, that actually happened. And, man, I'm just, I'm just mad. No one has just mentioned how crazy that 98 season was. No right. one has ever talked about this. There is so much drama. I've never, like, in that 20, what was it? So with that Dennis Rodman thing, and then, like, a week later, having your GM say the coach is going to get fired. Right. Your five-time champion coach <laughs> in the middle of the season, right after you had one of your star players spend 24 hours in Vegas, a week in Vegas, like, what is going <laughs> on? Like, social media would have had a fun, a like, Twitter. Oh, my gosh. Like – that can't happen nowadays. Like we Twitter will catch on anybody and everybody. Like the one, the first step Dennis Rodman takes, if that happened today, like we would know about that in an hour, like mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole Dennis Rodman situation. It just shows you like how much was going on that season. So man, it's a, uh, that's like probably the most shocking thing I've learned. And it wasn't even like, it was pretty recent. 20 years ago like yeah. so and no one talks about it really and i i guess i always i knew michael jordan was like one of the greatest competitors we've ever seen but i didn't realize how competitive he was like oh yeah after losing game one and two of the eastern conference finals against the knicks he goes you know to new jersey or even just like he got so pissed off because somebody would be like in the same category as him like when they played Clyde in 92, he was like, yeah. it pissed me off that people thought Clyde and I were on the same level or that Charles Barkley won my MVP. I was just like, geez, <laughs> like, this, this guy gets mad over everything. He did have a gambling problem. I don't want to hear that. I, I have a competition problem. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you gamble at $1.2 million, you got a gambling problem. I okay. like that quote. But yeah, I, I just have a competing problem. That's all. <laughs> It's <laughs> like, all right, dude. <laughs> um, but what was it? Uh, competitive. Yeah, I mean, and I remember hearing about the whole Clyde Drexler thing. I'm like, that was a serious conversation in 92. Who's better, MJ or Clyde Drexler? Like, we laugh about it now, but was a, I can't believe that was a serious question. Well, because, um, like, Clyde, Clyde had made two finals. Like, he had went – to the finals against the Pistons and then like Chicago. So like Clyde was carrying Portland. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, MJ had like a world icon appearance. Like there's no doubt, like he's had the most impact ever in basketball. Duh. <laughs> and so right. it's just amazing how much maybe – because I thought, like, Magic and Bird really helped, which they did. The MJ just, like, went on a whole other level. Right. But he was able to go on another level because of that 92 Dream Team. Right. I think if, you know, if Magic was the best player on that team or, if, like, MJ had just great timing in that situation. But having that, like, the Dream Team is, like, probably the, probably the biggest thing that helped international basketball. Right. It was the, it was the very first time I think of having pro athletes, which is kind of shocking. Um, what were they doing before? What did they do in '88? Just have college athletes out there? Pretty much. Why didn't they, they ever think of that before? No, my my favorite my favorite quote is like when they called Jordan, they were like, 
hey, we want you on the 92 team. He's like, who going to be here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah. So I, I also didn't realize, like, how close the 1993 finals was. Like, they were 10 seconds away, basically, from going to a game seven. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you hear people say, like, oh, MJ is so great because he ain't never had to go to a seventh game. <laughs> I, I hate like, that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, are y'all serious right now? That's, like, just detail, detail ever. Um, but and also, the whole Tony Kukoc situation. Poor dude. He's yeah. just, <laughs> just, he's just trying like to basketball. Make, he's just trying to have a better life for his family. Like, he's trying to get away from the war. Go to Chicago, <laughs> and they just bullied him. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize how – I've always wondered how the Bulls even got him in the first place because he was, like, recognized as this, like, the best international player around. And I was like, how did the Bulls get him? Uh, and so I didn't realize they drafted him in 90 in the second round. But then I was like, how – did he get popular after that? Is that how – I'm guessing? Yeah, I have no idea. And, yeah, I was just like – he was like the first Dirk. Like, well, he was like an involvement of Dirk. He was a 6'10", slender, international guy um, that could, like, shoot and drive, which was really rare <laughs> back then. And so um, – yeah, I didn't realize also that he led his country to the to that last cha- the gold medal game. Well, they, realize- were the, they were the cream of the crop until 92. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Croatia or uh, Croatia, Yugoslavia, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was a little eye-opening. Um, I, it, it's eye-opening because it's just like it's the complete opposite now. Of like, you know, when you have a great international player, it's like, oh, he's the one, like, especially. Speaking, uh, speaking of, like, the Olympics, did you see that quote this week by Carmelo that was, like, in 04, LeBron and, and I were wondering why we were coming off the bench for Richard <laughs> Jefferson? I saw that. I was like, um, hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was, it had to be just, like, sorority or sorority. What do you call it? Sor- like Legacy. Like legacy, yeah. Uh, RJ was not gonna let them try to get their spot, or like, especially at the beginning. I mean, LeBron and Melo had been in the league for a year, yeah, at the time. Um, yeah, that's funny. Did did RJ ever like make a comment about that recently? He did responded. He, about it? he responded, but I forgot what he said. Ultimately, he said like they were just so new into the league, nobody like knew how good they were. Some something like that. Yeah, that, that was funny. Um, but got anything else on the MJ dot? I mean, I'm excited for this tomorrow's episodes. Oh uh, yeah, he talks about punching Steve Kerr. I like that. Yeah. And they talk about <laughs> they talk about Scotty's like legacy, like the two years that Jordan walked away from the game. Yeah, and how, how Scotty almost took them to the finals. Hmm. Um. No, no, no. We need to talk. Uh, that's why. Dennis Rodman. I need to get on him right quick. <laughs> why? Dennis Rodman said this week, if LeBron was in the 90s, Scottie yeah. Pippen would still be the second best player in the league. And I was like, Dennis, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of hearing this whole thing like LeBron couldn't play in the 80s or 90s. But then they turn around and be like, MJ would average 52 or 45. Yeah. Um, it goes uh, both ways. Those topics are popping up now. And it's just like you can't have both. Like you, you can't. <laughs> that's just not how math works. Um, because like my my whole argument is like, okay, if you believe that MJ is gonna have forty five, then that means guys like who are scorers, like not even LeBron, like Kevin Durant or Amelo, that means they're gonna add, they're gonna barely scrape seventeen or eighteen a game back in the day. Yeah. Um, the thing about these arguments is that whether players could play back then every player right now could have played in the 90s every player could have just because everyone was light back then 
LeBron's heavier than everybody on the Pistons. <laughs> like, that's, but that's just how humans work. That's just – We evolve. In 20 years, they could have – in 2040 basketball could all play right now. Like, it's just yeah. – it's just a pointless conversation. Right. Yeah, it, it's getting hard to argue like that. And it's, it's getting to the point where you're just like – we have to argue. We have to argue like comparisons of like, how would LeBron do in the '90s and like, like equal that. Like LeBron, yeah, it's it's getting like really technical now, and so LeBron would average like forty in the '90s. So like, I look at like roster, like the Pistons roster. Who gonna guard LeBron on the pitch? You gonna put Bill Lambeer on him? Good luck. Yeah, and you know, at first I would say MJ would have averaged twenty five now, but I think if MJ was like born in this era, he would have developed. He would have developed a three point game. I just know he would have adapted, right. just like how LeBron adapts. So it's. It's just really hard to just like, cause I I do think like if MJ was playing now, he would have had he would shoot way more threes, better threes. Cause you know he wasn't really known for his three point percentage. All right, I did. I just failed to realize like, in Michael Jordan's three greatest three point percentage seasons, they had moved the arc up, but when they moved the arc back, in his last season, the sixth championship, he only shot twenty three percent from the field. Jeez. Yeah. But so. also, the crazy thing in that documentary last week, like, they were going crazy because Michael hit, like, four or five threes in the first half. Like, that's so common. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that's so common. Like, Steph does that. Clay they does were going that. crazy in the stands. Yes. I was like, man, Steph ruined basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, and, like, when I look toward the future, I fully expect someone to be on LeBron and MJ's level um, in the future, in 2040. Like, I don't – I people just get so caught up in their own era that they just don't want to compare their era. But that's a whole other deep argument. But, um, yeah, I like those tweets. It's like – LeBron can't play against these Pistons, and they show, like, Bill Lambeer. And I'm like, he's going to stop him. <laughs> I'm like, facts. Like, this is... like who, who going to guard LeBron on the jab? Jeff Horner, <laughs> Please. De- or, uh, yeah, Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge for the Suns. Like, <laughs> What's he going to do? Um, Craig Elo? Like, what y'all doing? That's, like... Like, honestly, like, in 2040, everyone's going to look like a Zion. Like, <laughs> just, like, big for no reason, but can jump out of the gym. Um, hey, shout out Jake Lagrasso. He, yeah, he can join the NBA. They're all, they're all going to be Jakes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're going to be Jakes, yeah, with, like, three-point straps. <laughs> imagine, if Jake, imagine if Jake had a strap. He could make the lead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. He would be in the NBA. <laughs> he, if he had a, if he could shoot, he would be. <laughs> you have to be big for no reason to be in the NBA now. Um. Yeah. So, anything else in that Jordan doc? There's so much. I'm trying to remember, like, because it's just like it's two like packful episodes. And I'm just like, wow, there's a lot of knowledge to soak in. Mm. Yeah, I did see something where. I forget about this too, but you know Michael Jordan's jersey retired at the Miami Heat. Like his jersey is hanging up at the Miami Heat. I didn't know that. Numbers retired, but with the Miami Heat, he never played <laughs> for the Miami Heat. What? <laughs> I always remember that. I always remember seeing that, and I'm like, I mean, weird. You know, right? Having a team you never played for, but your na- your name and numbers in the Raptor. <laughs> like that's swag. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even I don't even play for this team, and I have my number retired. Like I would not even 
I feel a little like weird as a Heat fan. Um, it's like having like your ex up there, like in the rafters. Nah, that's like having your ex like <laughs> tattoo her name on you, or like a girl that you really didn't even talk to, but like you really, really, really liked. So you always like remember. Her. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly like that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Have you been stung by a murder hornet yet? Man, I'm scared. I don't know about you, but you scared you scared of the murder murder hornet. I'm scared of the murder hornets. I'm scared of yellow jackets. Like that's my only fear in oh, life. Oh yeah, I remember that because used to you used to geek out when there used to be a a yes. wasp or a bee around you. So these are bees, but like times four in size <laughs> and vengeance and anger. <laughs> um. Yeah, they're, they're three times the size of Yellow Jackets. Um, their stinger is, like, almost the size of a Yellow Jacket itself. Oh my gosh. Um, but, I mean, you what? You ain't going outside again. <laughs> Com- confirmed. Outside is about it. Uh, it's not. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> um, you know, when, when NBA young boy said, I ain't going outside today, he, yeah. he was predicting something. He <laughs> Um, but, you know, I feel like the news was just trying to scare people for like a good week because they're, they're not like that out here. I mean, it's just, and they would use like that scary picture of the Hornet. Like, you know, have you seen that picture? Like when they ever like tweet about it, it's like full face mean. I was like, y'all don't have to do this just like, (laughs) um, and what was it? And, like, you know, you always hear about these weird, dangerous animals in, like, Australia or, like, Japan, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what if they just all decide to come here, you know? What if they all just decide to come to America? Oh, that'd about, be Shiloh. crazy. Shiloh, they're just going to pick up and I'd be like, all right, yeah. which, way, which way's the route? <laughs> right, we're going this way. <laughs> they just they, they just get bored. They put they in the animal, they, they put in the animal GPS, America. Oh, exactly. Like... There's a lot more room over here. There's a lot more humans. So, so what, happens um, if the, what happens if the spiders in Australia are like, all right, we're going to find a rock. We're going to find a way. They jump on some ships or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, in Australia, that's the only way to get out. Um, hey, they said, hey, our, our ship leaves at 4 a.m. Everybody on board. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody come through. But, yeah, it's like. They're going to they gonna be on the boat like the slave trade. They're going to be stacked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, nah, the that, main t- spider. That, that tweet you sent me had me dead the one that was like uh who would win one-on-one kd or larry bird and it was like <laughs> <laughs> larry would bring us back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah kd would have to go light on him can make can make people too mad <laughs> um yeah nah that's not it but yeah murder hornets We'll see. We'll see when they arrive to Texas. They're all in Washington or something right now. Um, but we'll, we'll see when they come down here. Make a return. They'll make a return trip to Charlotte. Um, so, what is it? What else? Murder Hornets. Aliens. UFOs oh, yeah. confirmed. The conspiracy theory that they're going to put mark in the, uh, they're going to put microchips in this vaccination. Oh, uh, yeah. That's... I mean, it's it's a joke, but like Shiloh. <laughs> I mean, I would do it if I was rich. I would. <laughs> that'd be live. Like, I, I would, <laughs> hey, I just think from their perspective, I could have control over the whole human race. Mm, you wouldn't want that. No. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it past Bill, um, but. Not even like just a microchip of like, let's see. I don't know. Just knowing everybody's interests. Yeah, I don't know. What if there's like some good that comes out of it? Or like we can like look at our like, instead of looking at the iPhone screen, we just look at our eyes 
And we just turn See, on our eyes. Podcast. That's like a movie. <laughs> podcast. Podcast. That's a movie. Here we go. Oh, that's a movie. Um, <laughs> that's going to happen. That's going to happen where we don't have to look at an iPhone screen. Hey. Hey. Tell it to someone in the 80s. They look at you crazy. I, I don't put it past anybody. So, we'll see. I saw something where, but, I mean, the microchip, that's, that's not going to, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's like, how would we even know in the first place? I mean, that's true. So, eh. You got a microchip right now. You don't I mean, even I know. Don't, I might. I might. You got your flu, you got your flu, uh, flu shot? It was a microchip. <laughs> I don't, do you, oh, do you ever wonder, like, do you ever do something where you're like, man, or what was it? Like, you know, people that have like, you know, ADD, ADHD type of thing, blah, blah, blah. or like some sickness. Cause you know, like when you're born, what can't doctors like kind of tell, or like, can they like pick up on, Oh, you have this, you have this allergy, right? That's a thing, right? For the most part. I always wonder sometimes like, have my parents told me all the truth? Maybe I have like, something wrong but they just don't they just ignored it and they're just like yeah. you don't want to find out what if i have, what if i have add and i don't all, know it all our parents lie to us yeah so especially with like the ADD, adhd world most people have it in a way right. it's normal like some of these probably, more successful they probably ahead. have like a, a minor version of it like it's not like an extreme yeah, I mean, it takes some ADD to be successful, you know? So it's like, you know, in those situations, I'm like, have my parents told me everything, you know, or like my family? Um, but what is it? ADD? Because like, ADD has like people, I don't know, some people say it in a negative way, which I, I will say, like, when it's, like, an actual big problem, but, like, having a slight ADD, ADHD thing isn't, like, all negative, you know? It's, like, don't downplay it, right? Like, right, right. ever feel that? I'm, like, don't don't make yourself feel bad about it. It's just, like, hey, you put it to use, you know? Like, rock, rock, rock with it, yeah. <laughs> Lean with like it, if too. A, like, if you, if you got a lisp, like, you know, like, rock with it, like, wear it with confidence. I guess you took, you took it to a whole other level. I think <laughs> a list. Yeah, like there's nothing to be shy about. Like you can't control it. Like be yeah. comfortable with yourself. Like rock with it. Like if somebody doesn't want to hang out with you because you got a list, like it's their fault. Like George Springer, the center fielder of the Al- uh, Astros, he has a list. But like, look at him. He's he's successful. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Can you fix lists? Yes. Is that, is that it's like a form of speech impediment. Like, you can correct that. I actually think I had one of those back then <laughs> growing up. Because I could not say my S's at all. Then you can say your name. I can say my name. <laughs> you, you, say, you, say, you say Hilo? <laughs> I, yeah, I, no, not that bad. I was, it was always like, I could, I could, I would say Sai, 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 Silo. <laughs> I would say Silo. My name's Silo. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't do the shh. So I did the sh. Yeah, so. Because I remember going to, like, speech class growing up. Just, like, basic stuff. Wasn't even anything bad. And I think, remember, all of a sudden, I was like, Shiloh? Whoa. Like, yeah, so. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, there's not there's nothing else on my mind. Uh uh you know Jay Williams? Yes. That guy he's he's, he's getting a little annoying. annoying. Yes. Is he getting annoying to you too? He's been annoying to me. He's cause he's he's trying to be like Stephen A a little bit. <laughs> Do you get that vibe? I feel like he's just trying too hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's cringy a little bit because Stephen like, A, that's his thing. Yes. Like, like I was like, turned off. Go ahead. I was turned off whenever he made the whole, like, we should play NBA games on cruise ship. And, like, I was just like, man, ain't nobody trying to hear all that. 
And he like he does like he just does the yelling and like and he never used to be like that, right? Like he never was like that. So yeah. I always was kind of just thrown off by that. I was like, you're trying a little too hard. Um oh yeah, uh I always forget this guy's name and I feel bad all the time. Uh RIP to the uh Armad, Armad, Armad. I don't the guy know. In Georgia, the, the guy yeah, in Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, that was crazy because that happened February the twenty third. Yeah, and here it is, just beginning of May. Like they just, but they only got arrested because of public outcry. Yeah, this honestly is the most successful situation this has ever happened. Where like video. Boom, everybody agreed, got arrested, boom. This all happened a good 24 hours. There was no cases, no lawsuits, because it was so, like, obvious. Boom, boom, boom. Most, like, it was the most smoothest result. I heard that ever. they also, I heard they also uh, arrested the, uh, the person that recorded the video. Yeah, they're, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, where's the, where's this guy? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. It's 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 great. I mean, it's like a because like the this was separated from all the others. I felt like just because it was just plain old, it was plain sight. Like there was no like, part for the other yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. like and like some of these, there's always like that slight argument that the other crowd can take. Mm-hmm. It was just like a straight up just dude got shot. It's like, just like racist. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah it's like dude turned the corner and they had like shotguns and pistols ready to like kill. Him. It's just like some people overthink it. I feel like, and it's just like nah. This is premeditated murder. That's what it is. Got him because he was racist. Yeah, racism is still around. I don't know why people think that's nah. shocking. I mean, <laughs> I, some of this is just too logical to me because it's just like, yes, like I don't know, I don't know. Uh, like, well, I, I think it's scary for me, like being a black man, because I'm like, I usually, I, I used to run like a lot, like last summer, I would run like every morning. Like, I can't imagine running around my neighborhood, which I've been accustomed to, and somebody just being like, "Hey there, boy." <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, because pretty bad. And they had to be, they had to be watching him for a bit because he. He probably ran the same pattern, like he ran the same route at the same time every day. So they were stalking him, essentially. So it's premeditated all the way around. Yeah. Um, I saw something where it's like maybe someone said there was crime in the area, but I nah, mean, there's all crime mean, in all areas. Yeah, so. I was like, I was like, I was like. Call it, hey, there's crime in this area. Like, <laughs> what, what, the neighborhood watch gonna come out. <laughs> It's like you're not special. Like it's like your your neighborhood's not special. Um yeah. go to Oak Cliff. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so yeah, the quote that like kind of stood out to me, he was like there was like a they didn't get arrested for what they saw. They got arrested for what we saw. Right. I was like, whoa, that's deep. That's a bar. But uh yeah, I mean yeah, Georgia. We'll, we'll see if they get convicted. Um, yeah, I guess that's one. That's the other big thing. But with them getting arrested so quickly, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I see all the honoring. But then I randomly see the uh, people that, like, it's always interesting to see everybody's, everybody's reactions. A lot of people, I saw a couple of people talk about like stuff from the Bible. Yes. You know, I, I don't have an opinion on this. I'm just like, this is all just weird. I don't have an opinion, but like sometimes I'm just like, why do we have to like apply this? Like, to everything? <laughs> like, like my dog died. Let me go find a mercy. Like, why, do, why do we do this? <laughs> yeah I don't know it's like I saw some people kind of comparing it to like the Greeks and the Romans from back in the day and I'm like 
I mean, you have a point. But that's a stretch. <laughs> but, like, it's just always been a thing. It's always just <laughs> – you don't have to go back there. You just look at us now. <laughs> like, <Yeah. I> don't... <laughs> so it's just – there's this one dude from DBU. Uh... No, I might as well say it. Uh, the dude, he was performing with me at that oh, one Kanan. concert. No, uh, Kanan. Kanan, okay. Kanan. I have never – I don't know this guy at all. But I follow him on, we follow each other on Instagram for some reason. I was really, he was, I woke up really early one day and I saw that he had like gone to the story and then you can see like, it was like three hours ago or something. And I saw, it was like, he was going off about the whole situation. And it said like, he was doing this at like 3 a.m. I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, um, and he was talking about like Bible stuff and Greeks, Romans uh socioeconomic situations the story was a good like four minutes i like skip but uh but it was just i don't know again no opinion on it it's just like a <laughs> the white dude killed a black dude racist yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, let's stop trying to be let's stop trying to get too analytical oversimplify it, like but uh shout out this week is the uh shout out to Choctaw. The, this is the one year. Oh yeah, we, we went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that, I think I think that day was the wildest for me personally because I woke up at four thirty in the morning, drove from Houston to Dallas, went to tennis in my class, and then I drove all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I just want to go bowling that night, but y'all were quote unquote tired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Man, didn't no, didn't nobody want to go bowling that day. <laughs> No. I don't know. After, after, after we ate our, our spaghetti and our, our pasta, <laughs> everybody was done. It was good pasta. Y'all were oh, loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but, you? Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was a good weekend. Yeah, need more weekends like that. We'll see. 2022. <laughs> In the future, that might be 2021. <laughs> No, nah, we need to go back to Austin. We need to see my boy Vince Young in that pool. <laughs> yeah. That was probably the most randomest thing in my life that year. <laughs> I'm just swimming. I see Vince Young. <laughs> Very randomly. Um, but I don't know. Uh, wow, we're at hour 20. I kind of want to, like, maybe in the future, I just try to, the longer these podcasts, the longer I want to tell just, like, random personal stories just like i don't know take the podcast to the next level um i thought of this one story from like three years ago but i was like i'm scared to talk about it but well maybe the next next podcast episode it's not even that big of a deal anyway but it's just like a funny thing to me because it was just like a little traumatizing slash like interesting no, um you need to tell the story my first but <laughs> it's not even that serious I've, I've told you a little bit but it's not even. Well, I'll tell you next time. Um, yeah. We're almost, yeah. Wow. Hour 23. Yeah, let's just close it out, I guess. You have any songs of the week? Shout outs. I, I, got, I got a shout out to John Stevenson. Congratulations on joining the iPhone gang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saw that. Uh, shout out to, I don't know. I had a shout out, but forgot about it. Um, oh, shout out to all the Armad. What's his name again? I feel really bad every time. Armad. I, can, I cannot pronounce this. Right? Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna say shout out, shout out the man that unfortunately lost his life. And Armad Aubrey. Okay, there. Arbery. Um, yeah, it was good. I run with Armad. Um. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Uh, song of the week. You have a song, uh, track. Mine's, mine's actually like really old, but it's been my my bump lately. I've just been riding the little baby wave lately, and just uh, this free, freestyle with a little baby just gets me every time. Freestyle. Yes. Mm. 
just that beat, just just the I don't know, it just gets me every time. Every time oh, I come yeah. back. I feel that. Um, is it song of the week? Yeah. I want to say. Uh, have I shout out the song? I need to sh- might as well. That rock star song by the baby. Yes, sir. Like a. It was like a low key. I found out about it through TikTok because it was a dance or something. Um, but 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 it was, <laughs> it's a great summer vibe. I like it. I saw you on TikTok too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Week. Yeah, man, every every <laughs> song. Hell, you every sell out. Song. No, I haven't made a TikTok. I, I mean, I made one with her, but uh, I don't. Have, yeah. I don't have an account. But every summer, you you always have to have a song that you bump the whole summer. Yeah, because I guys. Yeah, the summer songs. Uh, I don't yeah. miss. I think last year it was Kevin Abstract. Oh, yeah. Peach, and, uh, all that and, mess. And Dominic. Mm-hmm. It was a vibe. But yeah, I, I was just scrolling through TikTok. I see you. I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah. and I'll make I'll make TikTok appearances, but I ain't create my own account. <laughs> if you want me to be in a TikTok, I don't care. But You're if you start out. asking for my own account, no. I ain't trying to get my information. I ain't get my information stolen like y'all. Nah, <laughs> I mean I see like some stuff on Twitter. It's like weird because like Twitter's become the new Facebook. Cause like I see things on TikTok, and then like a month later I see it on Twitter, and then two months later I see it on Facebook. Got you got to stay ahead, man. Got to stay ahead. Um, yeah, you ain't gonna renegade or anything on TikTok or uh, you don't even know what that is. No, <laughs> oh, I don't know who you- <laughs> Uh, you'll you'll already gay one day. Um, I but, <laughs> all right. Well, anything else? Any secrets you have, real quick? Any secrets I have? <laughs> I found it weird that those shirts are called wife beaters. Do you okay? Do you feel like you're suffocating when you wear your mask? Oh, uh, I was like, where's this going? Um, <laughs> A little bit. I got I got a new mask actually. My first mask was like a like a machine. It felt like a machine. It was just, it was just like firm. It was just like it was, just, it was like this. Whereas like very you just like, it was you sturdy. Look like, you look like you about to go like go into like treat a cancer patient or something. <laughs> yeah, it was very yeah. But then I got these today, just the normal ones. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try these out, see what happens. This one, I mean, you had air to breathe. So yeah. with this, I feel like I might suffocate. We'll see. How about, Dad, do you have these? I have, like, so many masks. but <laughs> so <laughs> A whole many. collection? Yes, honestly. Uh, shout out to all those people that are still keeping up good hygiene because, you know, I, I can only imagine if you got funk breath and you got to wear a mask, it's over. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, that is true. Um. All right. Well, this is the first hour thirty podcast ever successful. It's cool. Might might have to mess around and do a three hour podcast one year. We'll see. All right. Peace. Peace. See you, man. Uh, see you. Bye.